Look at that. Now we got a phone app. It has extra buttons down here. We got a drop down. Uh, we're kind of mimicking the, the functionality here. Hey everyone, this is my SharePoint questions. And today I wanted to talk to you about design trends of 2021. So I was just browsing the internet, you know, looking at apps and that means normally phone apps. So, and I wanted to recreate something in Power Apps. So I was looking at this design trend. If you notice, you can see like the curved edges of here and maybe this pops out when you click the button and you have a nice little chart. Well, I wanted to recreate that in Power Apps. We're gonna manipulate some buttons, make buttons not buttons anymore, use them for the round corners. Uh, you know, you, you can insert rectangles in here from icons. Uh, there's not many, uh, I guess you could do a circle if you wanted, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn a button into like a frame. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that button, right? So this button is no longer gonna be a button. We're just gonna use it for its shape. So I'm gonna put a button here at the bottom, right? So this button is here at the bottom and we want the radius to be bigger. So let's see, let's go to the button. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to border radius. Right now it's set to 10. I'm gonna change it to 50. So you can see here my button now, the radius on the corner has got a lot bigger, but I don't want the, the bottom radius to get to change. So if we go to, let's see, radius bottom left, let's change that to zero. Let's change radius bottom right to zero. So now we have a button with two curved edges at the top. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change the display mode. So display mode, we don't want it to edit, we're gonna change it to view, right? So literally, this is just a, a picture now for us, right? And so that's the, the first part of my design trend. So if we go back to the picture, you can see, you know, they have that down here. This is your phone app, you got the curved edges. Um, we're gonna keep going, we're gonna recreate that. So I'm gonna put that at the bottom, right? And maybe we want it to be uh, a little bit smaller. Okay, so when I click on this button, what I wanted to do is I wanted to open up. And uh, let's go ahead and let's put a chart in here just to make it look nice. So we have a chart. We don't have any data to this. We're not connected to any data sources yet. But we have a chart with our cities. And we have our button down here. So we're gonna go ahead and create another button. So if we play this, right, the button's not clickable, right? It's just Pretty much it's just like a rectangle with curved radius. I'm gonna create another button here. And let's do a timer, input timer. And so we'll make this not visible to the user when we need to. So we have a button and we have a timer. So on the button, what we're gonna do is we're going to, on select, we're going to update context. And update context, we're gonna do a variable, the timer. We're gonna change it to false. So I've done this before on a few different videos. So what we're doing here is we're turning the timer off every time you click the button. That way, when you if someone spams the button, you know it turns the timer off, then turns it back on, turns it off, turns it back on, just in case someone selects the button faster. You know somebody might press it a ton of times. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna update context, right? So this is gonna be another variable. Um, let's see, update context, and this is gonna be, uh, we'll call it variable button. So it's our, our button, right? So this is on a button press. What we're gonna do is uh, whenever we press it, we wanna turn that variable button on and off. And then every time we do that variable timer, we also want to turn that to true. True. All right, so every time we click the button, we turn the timer off. Then we turn on another variable. We're saying, hey, this menu, so we'll call that menu. We'll call that variable menu. That'll, that'll make more sense. The menu we're gonna turn on and off. And then we're also gonna turn our timer to true, okay? So right now it's, it's not gonna do anything. We gotta, we gotta keep working on it. So on the timer, we're gonna say a duration. So right now it's 60,000, so that's six seconds. We're gonna say half a second. So I'm gonna change duration to 500, okay? 
And now we're going to keep going on timer on the timer start. So the start of the timer, we're going to change this to variable timer. So that means uh, every time we click the button, the timer starts. So, let's so I, I moved this up just so we can see the application runs. When I click this button, what we want to happen is we want this panel that's actually a button, we want it to grow. We want the height. So the height, the height is 111. We want it to grow every time we hit that button. So it's at 111 right now. We'll ch probably change it to 100 just to keep it simple. So we're going to say if the variable menu, that's the variable that I used before. If it's true, we're going to say it's 100 or it's going to be 100 plus um, three, 200. How about 200? We'll see how that looks. Times, uh, you have to put the time symbol in there. It doesn't know math. Uh, timer one dot value divided by timer one dot duration. And an extra exclamation mark there, or parentheses. So when I hit the button, you can see it grows, right? I'm gonna move this to the bottom. So now what it's gonna do is it's gonna grow but it's going to be off screen, right? We can't see it. So how do we fix that? Well, we got to adjust the Y axis also. So the Y axis, as it grows, we want the Y axis to stay the same spot. So it grows up with it. So right now we're at 1036. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say if the variable menu is true, 1036 else 1036 minus 200. So the reason we're doing minus is because as it grows, the y axis is going to be lower and lower and lower. But we don't want it to go lower. We want it to stay the same. So we're saying minus here. And we're going to say times timer one dot value divided by timer one dot duration. All right, so it's back at the bottom, right? Let's hit the button. Oh, it's it's not it's not perfect yet. We're not we don't have it set up perfectly yet. But you can see the the y axis does grow. All right, so there's a couple more things we need to do. On the timer in advanced, we need to set the on timer end. Right? So, this is one thing that I learned before. If variable menu is true, then we're going to reset timer 1 false else we're not going to reset let's go ahead and try grows back down grows that's all we needed was that uh, on timer end there so now we have this menu growing out um, and we could put like filters to our charts here we can hide this timer so we can hide this timer up here we don't even need to see this we'll change the visibility to false no one even knows that timer exists. It's gone. No one notices. It's still there. Our menu is now growing. Look at that. So then we'll change the theme, right? Because we want to have some nice looks here. So let's change it to lavender. All right. It changed the font a little bit. Maybe I can make the font a little smaller so it fits better. Um, let's say 15. There we go. Um, we have a button here. So this button is our update context variable timer. So that's the timer. And then the menu we're also using, variable menu. So let's move this button into our panel. So we'll say insert um, icon. How about this, the details list? We'll put that in here. And then so for our button, what we'll do is we'll copy that and I'll paste it in there. So right now the, the menu is not gonna move with it. So we gotta do the Y axis also. So the Y axis is 1054. I'm gonna copy this one, exactly this one from the, the panel. It's the Y axis. And so we're at 1054 here. I'm gonna paste it in, change this to 1054, 1054. Now we're gonna paste. 
And so now our icon opens up with it, right? Oh, uh, we're, we're getting there. We're actually having a real phone app, right? And so we can now put in a drop down. Let's do a drop down. So with the Y, what we want to do is we want to copy this variable menu on our drop down. We're going to change the y axis to 1154, 1154. So now when we click the button, look at that, we now have a drop down menu and we could filter our app based on that. We could put down more icons here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll get another icon. Let's say it was an edit button. Um, we want it, the y axis to be. 1250 look at that now we got a phone app it has extra buttons down here we got a drop down uh, we're kind of mimicking the the functionality here right the purpose of a visualization is insight not pictures so we we have a graph we can recreate this we have buttons down here uh, this is just my what I've done in a few minutes right so this is giving you guys ideas, but this is going to be a phone app and that's going to pop right up. I mean, it's like we're real developers now, right? Anybody can do this. It took me maybe 10 minutes. Uh, so just follow along. Thank you for watching. Um, my next uh, video, I'll, I'll probably connect this chart to real data and then we'll, uh, we'll use the drop down to change some things and use the buttons. If you want to see my next video, please like, subscribe. Um, thank you for watching.